Hey everyone, welcome to another Tuesday News Day and welcome to my guest for this week, Jason Hansa. Hi. Hi. Good, Good to, to see you. Again, you. Man. Good to see you. I just got to see you a couple weeks ago at Gen Con, so um, yeah. nice to, to catch up so soon. Yeah, where we won. I guess we, we should start with that. You know, defending champ Masters and Minions champions right here. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was so fun. I was <laughs> I was on the director's call uh earlier today and someone brought up the king crab. Um so I, I pulled up uh um our 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 minions for to our masters uh let me keep yeah. their their uh king crab and their um oh I'm gonna mess this one up. Um I don't remember what this one is. Oh, it's got a nap. Oh, it's a Nova cat. It says on the bottom. <laughs> How convenient. Yeah. No, it's a gorgeous schemes. Yeah. And, you know, and the people we played were amazing. So yeah, good they, people. they were, they were fantastic, but I had so much fun playing with you. Um, we did, we did the casual game and the first person that shot me, I declared war on and my entire mission was to, to take that one person down. So <laughs> Jason <laughs> did the, the hard work and I did the, um, vengeful work <laughs> yeah, yes yes i i drew fire <laughs> I drew it all night so yeah i well, drew fire the daichi was uh so i have that one over here this was um such a gorgeous paint job that um it was yeah. it was the envy so everyone was trying to shoot at it so that they would win it um yeah so they were trying to bring it down yeah and then you fell and killed yourself because nobody kills rem but rem it's true <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I had so much fun playing with you. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, um, welcome guys. Uh it yeah, is to uh, everybody else, you know. Yeah, yeah. As we <laughs> as we as we just have fun here. Um, so I have Jason on because there's an exciting uh new release coming this week. So we'll get there. Um, but a couple of quick um news items for you. Um, I have not heard back. I know that Lauren, um, unfortunately got COVID and is still recovering. Um, so I have not gotten any news yet on, um, on international, like the hubs, if, if the shipments have been sent, if they're on their way, if some have arrived, I, I don't know. Um, but I was told by our friend Tyler, um, we, let's see here. Uh, so some news for you. Um, this has come up in a couple of places, uh, and he's been getting some tickets for customer support and on the Kickstarter and QML has gotten these questions in the pledge manager. There's a selection for the Indy eight combo. Uh, there have been backers that assume that this would include the gray death Legion or McCarran's armor armored cavalry, but those were, uh, Barnes and Noble exclusives. Um, they're past their exclusive date now. So like you can get gray death Legion elsewhere and, um, McCarran's is coming soon, uh, but the combo pack for the ND8 is, um, let's see, Kellhounds, Eridani Lighthorse, Hanson's Rough Riders, Northwind Highlanders, Snords Irregulars, Wolf Dragoons, um, Urban Mechlants, and Proliferation Cycle Horses. Um, so, uh, and then he sent a little heart emoji. So <laughs> that's for you guys. Uh, additionally, uh, everyone with confirmed emails that selected the store credit instead of the shipping subsidization, uh, subsidization, subsidization um, has received um, has received their credit to their um, email provided. Uh, we'll be doing another round as we collect more usable emails. Um, so most of you should have your store credit now if that's what you chose. Um, Let's see if there's anything else here. Um, let's see. Oh, one more item. Uh, Catalyst has discovered there's a missing item, the House Arano uh, challenge coins. Uh, so if you've gotten your package, um, they're, they're shipping to QML uh, until this time until the time they get them if you're receiving multiple packages and have one of these coins in your order you will be receiving the remainder of your order uh other than the package that would contain um the house arano um challenge coin so those are on their way and getting fixed so thanks tyler for that quick update that just came through so uh appreciate you um awesome all right so uh what else do I oh i got another heart emoji i think he's listening hi tyler 
Um, so, you know, hit him up in chat if you have other questions. <laughs> I haven't got my Kickstarter yet, so you know. I guess that would be my question. Where's mine coming? Where, where's mine? Um, did, where's did, mine? You, did you submit your address and you're shipping yep. for your order by May, I don't remember the date, 13th? Yes, like the moment it came in. Then, so. then it should be very soon because you are wave one or segment one or I know. whatever they're calling it these days, one. They, they're I, I did the math because uh, and uh, they're they're kicking out like an order like every sixty seconds. So I mean they're they're working their butts off. Yeah, so you know it's... my you know I'm 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 just fussing because I'm a BattleTech player and that's what we do. Of course, of course. <laughs> uh, everyone will be job? so much. It, everyone will be so much happier when everyone has their shipments, uh, including Absolutely. us, including QML, yep, including including freelance writers. Yes, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um. The other thing that I'll do is uh, for you guys is we have a tentative. I got to find the right internet browser. Um, we have a tentative uh, release schedule that includes the stuff from the Kickstarter as long as everything fulfills um, by this time. So uh, if, if things get delayed, um, then of course we'll push. Uh, but I'll at least give you guys um, the... August, September, October. Um, so August was uh, Recognition Guide Volume 2, El Clan. So that came out. Uh, September, we're planning to release Force Manual Davian and Battletech Universe, the Standard Edition. Those uh, we wanted to make super sure. So um, when we checked the Kickstarter for language and everything, we are only releasing stuff that was like add-ons or like not Kickstarter exclusive where it's like, we will move up the, pu the publication of um battletech universe or whatever like that so um we wanted to make sure that we weren't gonna um release anything that was exclusive to the kickstarters first um so both of those are september and the battletech mercenaries paint set for the army painter um then in october we've got the mercenaries box set again this is dependent on fulfillment um mercenaries box set standard edition um, Inner Sphere Recon Lance Force Pack, uh, Battlefield Support Recon and Hunter Lances, and the Assault and Cavalry Lances, um, Clan Cavalry Star Force Pack, uh, McCarran's Armored, oh, oh, the BNN exclusive, so McCarran's Armored Cavalry Assault Lance will, uh, be released in October, um, and then two salvage boxes, the Battlefield Support and Mercenaries, and the Map Pack Savannas, um, so though, that's the plan for um do you, do you have what's in the mccarran's listed no i can't remember no I don't. So i'm sure somebody will jump in chat and say I, I get i get prices on here i get quantity printed that these are some big numbers um so uh and and size dimension size so it, it mccarran's is going to be 3.6 ounces <laughs> that's what you get um so yeah, that's uh, the plan for September and October. Again, pending Kickstarter fulfillment. So we'll bump anything that needs to um, based on some of this stuff. The the one question I have now that I'm looking at this though is like the um, second Star League pack. Um, I'm not sure where that is on this because... Um, now, I know this one is also supposed to be anything that's going to distro, but I would imagine Star League would be too. So I'll have to ask about that one. I'm going to make a note real quick. Yeah. It might already be supposed to be listed as like out because I thought it was shipping out soon. So, um, and I know that one is not tied to the Kickstarter. None of the Star League ones were. Yeah. None of the Star League ones were, but it was, um, it was just for the first time released at, um, at Gen Con. And so I don't think, I don't think it's in the system. And like, I, I, yeah, I, I, I feel like I would have heard about it if Starlink 2 was launching on the website or anything, but, um, it, it's possible it doesn't, it's, you know, not everything, uh, goes well in communication land in Catalyst land. So, um, but, uh, I'll have to follow up on that one. So I wrote it down. Well yeah, that's the stuff side of the house. I don't do any of that. Yeah. I know also, like, there were new premium minis and stuff like that um, that were at Gen Con. So, and yep. I know those don't go to distro, so those wouldn't be on this list. 
Um, yeah, the Battlemaster, the Nova Cat, I think. Yeah, but I'd like to have a full list of that uh, somewhere, so yeah. I'll have to check in on that. Um, I did also get an update a few minutes ago from Bryn about uh, PAX West. Uh, oop, hold on, let's see here. Any info on what we're doing at PAX West or Nova Open? For Nova, we will have the booth there as well as the inflatable Irby. Um, I'm not sure about the events for demo team yet. Um, as for merch, we'll have everything new that we had at Gen Con. So the new BFM, second Star League Force Pack, and the new Force Manual. So both Karita and Davian will be there, which by the and way... And Nova? Right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to write down Karita too, because Davian's on here, but not Karita. Unless it's a later month, but that seems silly. So, uh, I know that one's at the warehouse, so I'm like, why? Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, so that's pretty much my news. I don't have much about, um, PAX West at the moment. Hopefully next week I'll have more about that. Um, other things that are going on in terms of conventions, again, we have, um, a couple of trade shows coming up in September, Essen in Germany, um, and then PAX Australia. So I know Randall, Bryn, and I think Talon are going to both of those, I think. Um, and then we'll be the next, uh, con that I'm aware of will be, uh, our first time having a pre presence at Gamehole Con in Madison. Uh, so that's October 17th through the 20th. Um, and that's a really fun, it's RPG focused, but there are some battle tech tables there and, um, and board gaming and stuff like that. Uh, but it's a really great con for the industry. Like, um, Matt Lillard was there last year. A lot of special guests from the industry that you can actually game with, like from Kobold Press and uh, Rob Whelan does a lot of writing for uh, games um, and articles for games as well. Um, Elisa Teague is a prolific game designer. She plays games there. So, um, and it's like 10 bucks to play with like industry greats, which is pretty cool. So um, RJ Thomas and Jason Hardy will be there both playing, both running some Shadowrun. Um, I might be, I think I might be, but I'm not sure if I'm doing that yet. So, um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much my news. Um, let's see. If I think of anything else, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> uh, but let's switch over to you, Jason. I want to talk about you. Oh, well, cool. I like talking about me too. <laughs> We, I'm we, a writer and I'm arrogant. That's how we roll. Right, right. So <laughs> let's let's start at the beginning. How did you start writing in general? Um, well, I always kind of enjoyed creative writing back in grade school and high school and stuff. And then uh, for Battletech back in 05, and this is like the deep lore stuff, you know, the deep magic. Uh, for those who are in Battlecore, they ran a uh, Record Sheets Unique Mech Contest, which was writing in... Uh, some, 500 word entries for custom variants of mechs. And then they would, they would become canon, you know, and the community voted on them and the winners became canon variants. And writing for that kind of sparked the interest and Battle Corps had, much like Shrapnel of today, an open submissions policy. So I started trying my hand and sending in stories. I was in Afghanistan writing Battletech and at the time you had to mail them in with a self-addressed stamped envelope if you wanted a response. Wow. So, yeah, this is like I said, this is the deep magic stuff. And so, yeah, there I was in battle in Afghanistan, uh, FOB Salerno, printing out Battletech stories, throwing them, you know, with a, a brown envelope with MPS written on it and sending them in and getting rejection letters because that's how new time writers go. And it just I just kept uh, slugging away at it till I finally started connecting. Awesome. You know, you, you know, yeah, I mean, obviously, I uh as if you want to write, you know, for people who are trying to write for shrapnel, you just don't keep writing and not working at it because then you get nowhere. All you're doing is writing, which is great. But, you know, I, I looked up how to write stories, how to write plot, how to do. Oh, you know, I started, you know, doing that kind of stuff, doing the research, doing the homework and taking those lessons. Stephen King's got a phenomenal book on writing Ooh. that I, you know, I recommend for anybody trying to be a writer. Do you know what it's called? Uh, I think it's called On Writing. <laughs> <laughs> so um but yeah you know you do the homework you just keep getting better you know you take cr honest criticism you know you take constructive criticism get better and then you just eventually just keep writing until something hits so 
that's what it was. Cool. So, um, yep. now how did you first get into BattleTech? Uh, like uh, first way, play your game or get into the lore or whatever? Uh, the game. Um, the, uh, my buddies were a year ahead of me in high school. And so they, I was in eighth grade and they came back. This is, you know, the or, uh, late eighties. And they're like, Hey, you want to play this game? We, we learned up at, you know, at, at, in, in gamer guild. And I'm like, sure. And so uh, we played battle tech, you know, and we were getting all the rules wrong because they had like a photocopy of half the rules out of the second edition box. So we got a bunch of stuff wrong, but it was fun. And we just kept going from there. But um, I knew nothing of the lore for a long time. All I knew, because I was into facet games through Star Trek, so I knew kind of what Battletech was. You know, I'm like reading the little blurbs about the novels and stuff like that. And they had little pictures of people, you know, like they, you know, in the, in the catalogs. And I'm like, oh, that, that looks neat. That looks cool. You know, maybe I'll get into this one day. And once I played it, then I picked up like uh, the Merck's Handbook, the 3020 TRO 3025 and the, the rules of war. And I, I had three books for, you know, 10 years. Wow. <laughs> that was it. But yeah, it, it just, it, it wasn't until my first introduction to the lore was another player I played with in high school who gave me the blood of Kerensky trilogy, which I love, but you know, I'm like, who are all these people? They're sitting talking about, you know, the Kell hounds. I'm like, I don't know who these people are. It wasn't <laughs> until years later that I actually went back and read the first trilogy. I'm like, Oh, this makes so much more sense now. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I was playing the game before I got into the lore, but then eventually, uh, What's nice is that Battletech picked up. They started releasing all the novels about a qu every quarter, right when I joined the army as a private. So I had a lot of time on my hands, and the books were, you know, so I, you know, I read them all at that point. That's like I said, I went back, started rereading all the older ones, and it's every ninety days a new book would drop, and I was picking it up. So it was great. It was a great time to be a fan. That's awesome. I'm pretty excited too uh, for for you guys um, at home. We did an interview with Jason at. Gen Con, and we'll be releasing that soon here on our YouTube channel. So uh, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> so you might hear some of these stories again. Yeah. But Gen, Gen Con was, yeah, it was a wild time. Yeah. Just... We've already repressed. We're, we're yeah. we've slept it no off. No memory that was <laughs> um, Awesome. Yeah, I, I like that you can start with the game uh, and then get into the lore. Like, I, I have a feeling at this point with my my love for the Daichi that, um, that, that that's going to be my my route into uh, yeah. Natasha Kerensky and, and, and stuff like that, which is funny that like, she's one of the first names I heard of in Battletech. And um, funny enough, I just happened to play her mech because I picked the biggest one at the grinder table that I sat down at <laughs> and it happened to be hers. And now like I'm, I'm hooked to the Daichi. So, um, but yeah. I, I like that you can kind of find your own path based on those experiences. Yeah, a, a lot of people come into it through the video games. I mean, the video games have pulled in millions of players. And, uh, uh, you know, some people come in through the lore. I mean, a lot of people only read the lore. Um, I've known people that only paint. They have no, they don't care a lick about the lore whatsoever, but they yeah. love picking up the minis and painting them. So, you know, hats off to those guys because I can't pay, paint at all. <laughs> and I'm terrible. <laughs> so I, bad. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty bad at it. And I've, uh, I, I don't have a lot of patience for it um to just sit and like meditate on it and like do it because it's you're yeah. so in the zone for it um and it's i i don't sit still long enough to do that yeah, I yeah. Um, I prime them, you know paint the lasers paint the missiles and i'm done so. yeah yeah but i i <laughs> so, can appreciate a, a beautiful paint job um yeah I, and the time absolutely. that goes into it i just i'm not one of those that that can do it well um cool so you, we talked about you getting into writing. We talked about you getting into battle tech. Um, so let's talk about um, what was your first that was accepted, and and what have you written since then? Gracious, um, my first story was called a citation of respect, citations of respect, and I'd gone into the Galter source book, uh, the and the Galter campaign source book, and in there a. A Davian battalion just disappears. It was destroyed, and nobody knows what happened to it. And it was just kind of a mystery. And so, a lot of my early stuff, if you read them, is finding these little holes in continuity and filling them, just kind of answering mysteries, you know, small mysteries. Um, again, to new writers, find these little holes, find these little interesting little lines, and fill those out, you know, not with named characters, you know, just uh, 
but you know, a missing battalion, what happened? So yeah, my first story was about two history researchers on each side of the line, a Davian and a Cretan history uh, professors working together to try and solve what happened to this battalion. So, and I, and it hit, got published. And, uh, and after that, just that, um, I believe I have 17 published things, including a skulk of foxes. So that was the first one. Wow. 17? Yeah, a lot, a lot of little short stories over the time. Just, wow. You know, in Battle Corps and then uh, four in Shrapnel. I'm at one, eight, 10, 15. So yeah, four in Shrapnel. <laughs> one, eight, so, 10, 15. You were in number one? Yeah. I think I have number one behind me. I'm planning on doing uh, readings at some point from, from it. Yeah, it's sitting over there. Um, yeah, I, I'm not on the cover on that one. No. Oh. <laughs> they, got, they got all the big names on the cover. Oh, uh, uh, okay. But uh, if you ask people, People know, you know, they're like, Jason Hansen's got a story in there. And they're like, I don't know. You go, well, did you read the one about the horses? And people are like, oh, that one. That was you? So, yeah. <laughs> the one about the horses. I I, I like it. Yeah. Um, okay. So, um, gosh, you've written 17 since then. So you, you mentioned the title of the book. So A Skulk of Foxes. Um, right. Now that's supposed to release, I think, in three days, right? Right. Um, Kickstarter backers have already released a di- received a digital copy. So this is not news for some people. But yeah, for everybody else, um, it will be released on digitally on Friday, I believe, on August 23rd. And I don't know when it's going to be on Dead Trees. But once it is, I'm going to buy like 80 copies and send them to everybody I know. So, you know, I'll be like number one on the charts. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It'll all be me. Uh, um, you'll, yeah. be, you'll be the best sales. Uh. <laughs> exactly. Um, no, I'm, I'm super happy. I'm super proud of this story. I'm super glad I was allowed to write this story. So I really hope that people like it and I hope, hope it connects with people. Yeah. So, um, I want to hear a little bit of, um, what the story is about, but first I want to shout out, uh, you had mentioned the artist. Um, yes, the art is phenomenal. The cover art, it just kills. Um, they asked me what I wanted on it. I'm like, well, you know, King Crab has never been on a cover. I want the King Crab. I mean, it's the Colonel's ride. I mean, it makes sense. But yeah, I, that was very deliberate. I'm like, I want a King Crab. Yes, there's a Tiburon in this, but that's been on covers before. Mm. You know, so. It's, uh, yeah. the the artist is Tan Ho Sim. Yeah, they, they, they killed it. Absolutely yeah. killed it. It's gorgeous. Um, I love the rain. I love the, the atmosphere. Um, it's good stuff. Uh, all right, so tell us tell us about the story. Okay. Um, well, I guess I'll start with the cover art. And because it's right there on the cover, it's, you know, it's sit there, and if you look on the, the battle mech, there's a, an old unit uh, that's been listed in a lot of source books called the Screaming Eagles. And they trace their history all the way back to the Star League, and they've never been in a, a fiction before. So I was, I was asked to use them. I asked to use them and I was allowed to, which I'm very thankful for. And, um, no, because, you know, it's, you don't want to bring units back from the past, but you know, if they're not dead, they're not dead. So I'm like, they're not, you know, so, but it was also why these guys specifically in their past, they committed war crimes just with, you know, and since then they've been keep sinking lower and lower. They were an A-level unit, and now they're around C minus, maybe D. And so I wanted to write a story about a unit trying to work their way back into a position of honor, you know, you know, to be, what they believe their heritage is equal to, you know, so a redemption story. Mm. So uh, that's the unit on the cover, and that's the mercenary unit that gets involved into the story. The story is set on Sun Hao, a independent world on the left side of the map that it has a battle mech factory and so there are shenanigans afoot in the surrounding area because there's a bunch of raids going on both on world and around it and clan c fox suspects there's going to be trouble so they don't own the world but they carry a lot of their products and so there's money involved so they send a watch agent and what the watch is their c uh their cia essentially their intelligence agencies so they send in an intelligent agent to uh, figure out what's going on. And so, and he is working alongside a Sea Fox merchant commander. Now, this is, I am so happy I was able to flesh this out. I did not create this. It's in the lore, but I was able to flesh it out. What the merchant commander is, the merchant ranks are 
previous warriors that have tested down into the merchant faction, the, the, the merchant caste. Uh, the, the, uh, the clans, as you know, have different castes. There's the warrior caste, the merchant caste, the labor caste, and everything su is subordinate to the warriors. Well, these merchants, so the, they have the ability to act as warriors as necessary to either defend their property or to gain new property if it calls for it. They're not warriors, but they're above merchants. They're kind of in this interesting little middle ground. And I was allowed to flesh this out, and I believe... I think it's really neat. I think readers will not only like it, but I think players, people who play the RPG, will have a lot of fun playing these merchants or traders, but they can also get in their Mac and kick some butt if necessary. Mm -hmm. So this intelligence agent, a uh, merchant that can fight as a warrior, and a mercenary unit that's been down on their luck have to work together to save the planet. So that's it cool. in a, kind of a nutshell. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking right now uh, through my chat messages because I'm distractible. Uh, for ah, I found the link. Here's the pre-order link. Uh, so if you have, if you'd like a physical copy or you'd like the PDF, um, and aren't part of the Kickstarter, uh, where you got one already, um, that's where you can get your copy. Um, as it launches in three days. Yep. Yeah. I don't know if you can pre-order the P the uh, the uh, hard copy yet. I don't know. Um, I hope so. Yeah. That's a good question. I'm not sure. It's, uh, I want to find usually out. Usually, the yeah, usually the hard copies follow about a week or two weeks after. At yeah. least, like traditionally, like with shrapnels and other, you know, releases that Catalyst has done. So, yeah, I don't know, but you know, as a fan, because I pick up everything, I read everything. I'm a writer, but I'm also a fan. You know, I'm... that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, so, so, what was the last book you read? Of in general, of BattleTech or a BattleTech, um. I just read a Craig Reed Shadow of the Dragon. Ooh. And phenomenal book. Oh my gosh. He absolutely killed it. Awesome. For readers who haven't read it yet, it's a detective story. It starts off with a, a murder. I mean, it's and it's it's a it's a cop. I mean, you can you, you can feel the rain, you can feel the grit, you can smell the tobacco. I mean, ah, and then it goes into political because it's it's you know, it's on a Luthien. You know, the cap uh, the capital of the Traconis Combine and everything ends up being political there. And just I'm not gonna spoil the story for anybody, but it's just absolutely one hundred percent worth the read. So yes, that was I read that I want to say right before Gen Con. And uh yeah, oh such a good book. Absolutely, you know, shouts out to Craig. Me and Craig came up through Battle Corps right about the same time. We did a lot of reading of each other's stuff, you know, a lot of, you know, sit there and double checking each other's work and proofreading and you know, bouncing ideas off each other. So I'm really happy. It's like he kicked out a novel. I mean, he, this is like his third or whatever. I mean, he, 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 you know, fifth or whatever. But uh, yeah, he, he's releasing a novel. I'm releasing a novel. It's like old times. So I'm, awesome. I'm so happy. I'm Please. so happy for him. And yeah, uh, and he, he just kills it, you know, so. Do you, what else do you have coming? Any, any other works that are in the approval pipeline? Um, well, there's The Strength of the Pack, Ooh. which part one and two have been released but not released you know it's kind of it it's in a funky spot right now um it's a serial novel uh set with the clan wolf during the invasion it's set immediately before the invasion so uh, uh strength of the pack i don't know the schedule on that it, it's you know uh and then i'm, I'm uh, looking it up to see if it's on my list for this year so it um, might be, it might not be, you might, you'll, you'll probably have to talk to John about it. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 I made this list with, uh, yeah, it's not on for the rest of this year. Um, cause I've got the dates through, uh, the end of December. Right. Um, but hopefully we'll see that in 2025. Right. Then, um, I'm also working on me, Craig Reed and, uh, Phil Lee. And it's funny cause it's like Craig A. Reed and Phil A. Lee. So they're like, you should put an A in there. Like Jason Ahanza. I'm like, that is technically correct. The best <laughs> kind of correct. Um, the three of us are working on Wars or Reavings novels, uh, books one, two, and three. And so they are all loosely tied together, but you don't, you know, you can technically read them in any order, you know, um, but you know, they all do kind of do that arc and, uh, I've read both of where they are in their stories. Phenomenal. They're, they're, they're crushing it. They're killing it. Uh, they're just knocking out of the park. I mean, just, yeah. So I, I, the, the fans should be in for a good time. Uh, it, it's, you know, there, there's a lot of great fiction coming down the pipe. Awesome. Awesome. 
All right. Um, well, anything else uh, you would like to share of stuff that you're working on or thoughts on Battletech or anything in general before we skip over some Q&A? Um, not really. I mean, I just, as I said, I'm a fan, but I, I'm a writer, but also a fan. And I think this is a great time to be a fan. There's an energy about the the the, the, the game. There's an energy about the story. Um, I, I, I really think that every faction is in a good and interesting spot. And so it's going to be really neat to see where the next couple of years take us. Uh, again, like, I don't know what everybody else is doing. I, you know, I, I like when shadow of the dragon drops, I sit there and I read it just like everybody else. And I love it. You know? So, you know, I, I can't wait to see like Brian has a novel coming out next year and Michael, Michael C has a novel coming out next year. Just, I can't wait to read them, you know? So I'm excited. You know, I think Battletech is a really interesting spot. I think there's a lot of good stuff coming up. I know there's a lot of good stuff coming up. And I'm just happy to be part of it. And if I can just write a story every so often that makes people laugh or smile, then, you know, then I'm, I'm happy. Have Have you gotten to take a look at all at Universe yet? I got a copy. I was able to skim it. I haven't had a chance to park my butt in route. Yeah, same. <laughs> Being a writer I... sometimes, yeah, it's like I should be working on my story, you know, so... When you become a writer, someone once said that it's you've chosen to do homework for the rest of your life. So, no, I haven't had a chance to sit and read Universe because I, I've been trying to get, you know, get work done. Fair. Fair. Awesome. Okay. All right. Well, let's skip on over to um, some questions. Uh, I am Belch asks, any updates on the missing cookbook and Art of War book that backers didn't get with the initial Kickstarter order? Uh, well, since we know Tyler's... No, I have no updates. Oh, that was for <laughs> you. I'm sorry. Well, uh, since we know Tyler's listening here, um, I know that uh, I've seen some of the, sh the pictures of people's shipments coming in that has them now. So, um, Tyler, maybe if you could check uh, this week uh, with QML on if what their plan is for the refulfillment of um, the rest of those. That would be awesome. Um G Stillings asks, who do we contact if we receive multiple salvage packages with vehicles in them instead of mechs from the Kickstarter? Um, tried contacting via Kickstarter page, uh, haven't gotten a response. Um, go ahead and follow up to, um, sorry, Tyler, T Buckner, B, uh, I'm going to put it in chat, uh, at catalystgamelabs.com. Um, I got to pull up chat again. Where to go? Come back. And you can send any spare minis you don't want to me, you know, Kara. <laughs> Dot com. Um, send the follow up to him, but I know like we, we're waiting through like 300 messages right now. So, um, uh, so he will get back to you or someone will get back to you. But um, if you want to follow up, you can send an email. Um, have all the shipping credits gone or will more be coming? More will be coming. Um, as uh, I mentioned from Tyler's update. Um, do, 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 do. Sorry, scrolling up now. He's been messaging me as he listen, listens to this. <laughs> um, uh, everyone with confirmed emails um, that selected the store credit instead of the shipping subsidy subsidization has received this to their email provided. We'll be doing another round as we collect more usable emails. Um, so Tyler, if you maybe want to give me, a, I know you're typing already, so you might be giving me an answer right now um, on how to verify or how to um, uh, confirm emails. Um, that would be helpful. So thanks. Um, let's see. How do we contact CGL via the Kickstarter page? There's no option for me to send a new message. I can only reply to my initial survey. So if you go to the Kickstarter page at the very top, uh, you'll see, I'm just going to go so I can walk you guys through it too. Um, at the very top of the project, just type in mercenaries. Okay, I'll type in Battletech. It likes that better. There it is. Uh, so right at the top, uh, over on the right hand of the image, uh, you'll see created by Catalyst Games. You can click on that 
uh, and it'll do a pop-up and you can click on contact me and that will let you send a message um, to the Kickstarter. Uh, Wandering, Wanderer DG asks, um, question, I've seen some folks sharing pictures of the first Somerset Striker Bushwhacker having issues with the LRM5 on the shoulder. Has this been addressed? Uh, I haven't seen that. Um, Usually if someone, if there's a complaint, maybe Tyler has, um, but usually it somehow filters to me. Uh, but again, send a message to Tyler at, um, at uh, T. Buckner at CatalystGameLabs.com uh, and send in a picture um, and we'll be happy to look into that. If, if there's something that's not quite right, we'll absolutely replace it if it's, especially if it's not a, a wide issue. If some folks are sharing it, but it's not like a ton, then it could just be faulty shipments or something and we'll replace those. Um, but if it's a wider spread issue, then that's good for us to know. So please send us what you can. Um, when will Northern Arsenal ask, when will the Somerset Strikers box be available for purchase? Uh, let me pull that product schedule back up. And I, I would also love that because I didn't order it for my Kickstarter. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see when it's think, on the list here. I think it's late on the list because it was a late stretch goal, but let me Yeah, yeah. Let me check. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about the push blacker, but one of the one of the guys at our local game store brought his pack in. I saw the mauler and gorgeous sculpt. Absolutely gorgeous sculpt. So as of right now, unless again um fulfillment delays this, it's set for December. Just in time for Christmas, yay. Yeah. Um now what Santa's bringing me. Uh, Al Alandre, Q Alandre, Q Alandre IQ, I'm sorry if I'm getting your name wrong, uh, are Wave 4 orders that haven't shipped yet and include the Arano coin being held in the entirety? Um, that'll be a question for Tyler. He's uh, typing uh, um, as we go here. Hopefully we'll get you an answer by the end of this. If not, all of these questions um, I can also forward to Tyler and then he can get a backer update out. Um, do we know when the dice will be released into the wild after Kickstarter fulfillment? I don't think they're on the list either because I don't know that those would go to retail um, or to retailers because um, there's just so many. Uh, yeah, they're not on the list, so um, I would have to ask about that one. I'll put it in the Skype chat right now, just so, uh, just so that I don't forget to ask someone. Those, those, those might end up being like on the store or something. Yeah, you know? they'll they'll Who be knows? released on the online store, but like when, I'm not sure. Uh, do we have a plan for? Um, I'm sending it to Randall. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mercs dice to release on our store after fulfillment. Okay. The liquid core ones are interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, again, I've only seen them. I haven't got my Kickstarter yet. I, I, I'm gonna go home and sob. I, I got to see a bunch of at, at Kerensky Con because Randall got samples of everything. So we got to see uh, stuff there. And yeah, yeah it's uh, the dice are gorgeous. Very, very cool. Seeing all of them split on a table together when there's like 60 sets or something like that. It's it's a lot of dice. It looks pretty cool. Um, let's see. Um, more questions about the Rana coin, um, which I'm, let's see if I've gotten a response from Tyler yet. You know, like, like I said, a lot of people come to the, into the game through the, the, uh, the, the video games. So uh, I'm not yeah. surprised there's a lot of questions about that. I never played that game. Uh, I'm not even sure which platform it's on. So, you know, but, uh, a lot of people have and love it. Um, the Arana coin uh, shipments are not being entirely held for the coin, just the package that would have included the, clo the coin if you have multiple packages. So they're waiting for that coin to get there to put in the last box, uh, but they'll send the other box first. Um, let's see. 
Um, if we got store credit, could we use it on the army painter set? You can use it on anything that's on the Catalyst store, and the army painter set will be on the Catalyst store. You can um, use it for scope of boxes when it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I say you should use it on. Yeah, right? Um, right on Probably our website. <laughs> um, will the Blood Asp uh, salvage box be released in retail, or will it be, will it be Kickstarter exclusive? Let's see. I think the Blood Asp is coming. Um, so. Yeah, uh, it's coming to retail. The plan right now, as of right now, is January. Um, we'll be releasing through like May of next year because like you just can't overwhelm retailers with with releases. Like they can't carry everything. Um, if we were to be like, hey, here's four hundred new SKUs for you. Have fun. Um, they can't afford to do that. So we're releasing them in in chunks each month. Um, for for our guest, okay, some questions for you, Jason. What? Uh, did you start off wanting to be a writer, or did writing s sneak up on you? Um, I I guess it kind of snuck up on me. It was just something like I said, it's something I liked doing as a kid, and then uh, when I had a lot of fun in that contest, and so then yeah, I just I'm like, well, let me try my hand at it. So no, I never thought I would be a writer. Writing was always a mystery and magic to me, but. Awesome. So, yeah. um, which year? Uh, oh, oh, someone asked about your service. Which year? Which unit? Thanks for your service and your family's many sacrifices. Oh my great goodness! Um, I joined as a private back in the day, and I was in uh, Korea, back in a medical supply and optical unit, the unit that actually made all the the birth control glasses all around the peninsula. That was my unit. Oh wow! And uh, yeah, it was crazy. And then I went down to Fort Sill. Uh, took my GI Bill, went back to Northern Illinois University, and then commissioned as a lieutenant through ROTC, and then went to Germany for several years. But I was stationed in Germany for several years, but I went to war for half of them. So, yeah. um, and then I got back to the States, went to the captain's career course, went back to Korea for three years, and then uh, did a couple more deployments. And finally, I'm out here in Virginia, Fort Greg Adams, where I retired, and I'm still working for the Army as a GS civilian now, because I love it. You know, I just... I really enjoy what I do, um, and by working hard, I can make the Army a little bit better for the troops that are coming in. I just, I work for the Army, and I'm just trying to leave it better than when I found it, when I was in it. So, Aww. you know, I, do, I just work as a GS civilian. Yeah, it just, I do, I do, I work, and I work with good people. But good. Oh, that's hard. awesome. And uh, I know to be a bad, bad rap, but I'm surrounded work and ask for everybody, you know, for the soldier stuff. So. Aw. Um, we're, we're, we're losing you a little bit again, but um, um but we got the sentiment. <laughs> it was um it might be my internet, it could be your internet, I'm not sure. Um it might be mine. It, it's it, you know, it's it's hard to get a good signal in here. Um yeah you froze up on my end. I don't know if you can uh, yeah, you're frozen, but I can hear you. You're a little robot-y, but, um, oh, oh, you I'm look back. like you're back. It looks like I'm back. Yeah. Yay! When in doubt, turn it off and back on again. Yeah, well, it did it for me, so. Awesome. Um. Is there another question? <laughs> yes, from Anonymous. Who uh -oh. is your favorite shrapnel contributor, and why is it Lorcan Nagel? <laughs> huh. My favorite shrapnel contributor is Lorcan Nagel. <laughs> <laughs> no, there has been a lot of great uh, shrapnel stuff. Just absolutely. And for anybody who just wants some bite-sized pieces of Battletech fiction, grab a shrapnel. And you don't have to – you can grab any of them because they're all little pieces of short fiction and snippets of world lore and stuff like that. It, most of them have a mech or two in there. Just You can't go wrong with any shrapnel you pick up. Awesome. Um, Mechanical Frog asks, uh, what item are you looking forward to from your Kickstarter order, Jason? Ooh, and, you know, and you know, Frog, good good to hear from you. I love your work. Uh, and for people who don't watch Frog's videos, go watch them. Well, I mean, not this very second, but later, after you're done watching <laughs> me. Uh, <laughs> I am looking forward to most of the Mercenaries box set itself because I, I w want to see Battlefield support p points grow in popularity i love using them i'm fascinated by these new way of playing vehicles i mean I've, i'm an old guy so i like old style classic 
vehicle rules, but I'm fascinated by these this quick play version of the tanks where you can just sit there and just use a little car to play them. So absolutely the box set, but support points and the, the new cards for the support vehicles in particular. I'm hoping they catch on with the community. I think they're great. That's awesome. Um Aero Van Hattelo asks, uh, I'm currently writing a shrapnel submission. Got any tips? Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for asking. Um, uh, follow the rules. Number one, every shrapnel issue has got a list of rules, things that Phil, the, the editor, is looking for. That's the first test. If you can't obey the rules, why should the editor pay you money? It's just, it's, it's, it, working is professional. Writing is professional. This is essentially kind of a part-time job. So rule one is follow the rules. Uh, rule two, uh, play to your strengths. Like, like I said earlier, when you sit there and you find something allure, find it small, find a corner of the universe and make it the characters matter. You got 5,000 words to work with. Focus on a character, maybe a second character. Why does this battle matter to them? And again, don't make that a name character. Don't try to change the lore. For God's sakes, don't try to bring the Wolverines back. Just find a nobody and find out what's important to them. And write it honestly, write it to the best of your ability. Give it to a friend who I can look it over because you're going to screw up. Have them find all your mistakes, rewrite it, and then send it in. And then, uh, as Kevin Kalani, my mentor, another Battletech writer, said, and he stole it from another writer. We all steal from each other. <laughs> right? Write, submit, repeat. Once you finish writing that first story, keep writing. Even if you just put them in your pocket, you save them, you, you know, just keep working at it. Keep honing your craft. Read a little bit of homework. And then just keep going. Awesome. But yeah. Number rule one is follow the rules. That's awesome. Okay. Um, oop, new message from, let's see. <laughs> right from John, you're fired. I'm, I'm no, I'm just checking with uh, if if uh, Tyler has any other answers. Um, <laughs> he said, I forget if there are any other questions, but tell Jason he's a bad boy for not answering one of his add on questions. <laughs> I wonder which one it was. <laughs> uh, T Buckner at catalystgamelabs.com. Yeah, no <laughs> <laughs> that's probably what's holding my order ah curse me awesome. ask me um all right let's see we have time for a few more still um yeah. i mean they're gonna all be for you but i'm hoping for one from here too yeah i've got um from mike malley we i think we answered this one already could rem look into when the second star league and uh mac lances will be released um mac we got uh that is i think i said october um the, the, the daishi is beautiful absolutely yeah. Stunning. Yeah, Victor Steiner, Davian. I mean, sorry to kind of rub it, but yeah, I grabbed my Gen Con and it's gorgeous. That's, yeah. That's okay, nice. it's not that pretty. Um that one that one is nice. <laughs> but uh the Star League one isn't on the list, so I'm gonna have to check on that. But I think it should be soon because if we released it at Gen Con, usually it's up pretty fast after. Um let's see. There was one question I saw. Where was it? Um about the any news on the mul um i don't mm. however mm. however let me let me go <laughs> i was referencing this and then clicked away um on september 10th so that's in three weeks i think one two three september 10th my tuesday newsday guest is going to be josh perian and we will be nice. talking about the mul um so tune in um, he, he is one of the hardest working Bubba's at Catalyst. I, 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 I've, I've met him, shook his hand, and uh, he's a great guy. And yeah, he 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 works his butt off and puts his heart in for the team and for the fans. So I'll probably be definitely dialing in if I'm not at work. Awesome. <laughs> um, let's see. I'm trying to find the ones that I might know. Uh, Dirk uh, asks, when will the two legendary neoprene maps? and the BFM City Luna be available uh, in the CGL web store and then the second Star League. Um, Max... Those legendary maps are gorgeous. I wanted them. I just kind of had to kind of watch the cash at the, by the end of Gen Con. Yeah. <laughs> but um, they're so pretty. I understand the question. I'm scrolling through to see if there's anything on any maps or 
The Battletech map pack city is December. Um, force pack, force pack, force pack. Commanders, field commanders case. Is that the the camo? That's case? probably the case. Yeah, yeah. that's the yeah the demo. Yeah, the big the big uh, hard shell case. Battle mat city pretty... HPG heliport is January. Battle mat Savannah Large Lakes is January. Oh, Karita. Um, I do see Karita on here, but it's not scheduled for release until February, which seems weird to me. But I'll well, they probably want to give, give it, well, like you said, you know, they probably want to give it a little bit of room to breathe. You know, yeah. not release all the books at the same time. Yeah, I get that. Um, we'll see. Uh, Battle Met Savannah River Delta and City HPG Engineering is February. Um. Uh, Field Tech Alpha Strike Lunar City is April. Field Tech Alpha Strike Grasslands Desert is April. Um, Battle Mat Field Tech Grasslands Desert and Lunar City is May. BFM City Lunar is June. Uh, Battle Mat Legendary Battles Thunder Rift and Misery is July. And Battle Mat Legendary Battles Twycross is July. So we've got to wait. We gotta wait for that, um, but it's on the list. Uh, let's see. Is there any TA on the new universe book and force manuals to reach retail? Um, again, uh, I think we did cover that. Universe is September um, and Davian is September. Uh, Karita is looking like February at this point and Star League, I don't know, but soon is my assumption. Um, my my guess would be September on um, Star League, uh, second Star League. Um, the, the force building rules of, the, of those new manuals are very cool. Just they they make it so a, a player can sit there, just flip over to the page, figure out what kind of lance they want, and then sit there and they're using the mechs they have in front of them, just quickly build a lance, put it on the table. It's yeah. it's really they they the the team knocked it out of the park in my opinion. That's awesome. Um. You know what? I'll, I'll bring this one up. Um, Edwin Lucas asks, how do you feel about the Aces version that's in the works? I got to play it at Origins, and it's cool. Like, it's neat. Um, I'm excited for it. I think uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I like uh, the co-op goals that it has, and I like the AI versus. Like, it... it Obviously, having, like, everything printed out in front of you, like, there's certain cards where it's, like, if this situation happens, where if you're more than this many inches and, uh, or the, the, uh, for, for the bad guy, um, if you're more than this, if the unit is more than this many inches from an enemy and, um, two objectives are revealed and, 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 then do this, and then, like, there's, there's different things, so it'll react in different ways based on the in-game situation, which I think is really cool. Um, so there's times when it's like being a little bit more defensive and like, mm, I'm not going to fight. And there's times when it's like, oh, I'm going to go in hard. Um, so I, I think it's really neat. Um, I'm really excited for, for, for uh, you guys to see more of that. Um, and it's five o'clock. So that's all the time that we have for today. Um, but thank you so much, Jason, for joining me. And thank you, chat, for being here. Um, well, thank you for having me. Of course. It's it's always good to see you and spend time with you, Jason. And uh, for you guys, we'll have more next week. I'll keep pushing on Mercenaries info for you guys um, uh, as, as we do every week. Um, and we'll get you what we can. So uh, thank you guys for your patience. Thanks for being here. Uh, see you in oh, three weeks for Josh Perrion uh, and news on the MUL. And I think that's all. So thank you, guys.